All right. Happy Saturday, October 14th. So, yes, that's right. Pastor Rick back with Wisdom in October, our journey through the book of Proverbs. So we're doing a chapter a day keeps the foolishness away. Uh, Today it is October 14th. So we are in Proverbs chapter 14 and it is 35 verses chock full of great wisdom for you. And I got my little friend back here. Go Ducks. Uh, Ducks are playing the Huskies today. So let's go Ducks. All right. So big rivalry day. Um, I got I got some family in Washington that's probably not on board with my rooting choices today. But hey, all right. So uh, I just have a couple of verses I want to just throw out there for you. And then I'd love it if you drop in the comments the verses that are sticking out to you that are significant to you. And so let's start with verse 8. The prudent understand where they are going, but fools deceive themselves. And just thought, what an interesting uh, differentiation between the wise, the prudent, and the fool is to look where you're going and understand where you're actually going and telling yourself the truth. Telling yourself the truth about where you're headed and what you're doing and where where you where the all the things that you're doing where they're going to take you and and making appropriate adjustments along the way and so um then jumping into the next verse is verse 12 there's a path before each person that seems right but in the end it leads to death Uh, there's a way that seems right unto a man but in the end it leads to death and you know if we go back to chapter three uh you know almost two whole weeks ago. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. There's just, it because of the nature, uh, the sin nature that we had kind of thrust upon us as a result of the curse of sin, we got to be careful that we don't just go our own way, that we don't just follow our heart, that we don't just, if it feels good, do it kind of a thing because we are kind of, predisposed because of the curse of sin to to potentially go astray to potentially walk the wrong direction so we want to make sure that we're a people that are surrendered to the lord i would say <clears throat> excuse me pretty much daily basis that we're taking time to write our hearts before the lord to surrender things to lay things down um i think that it's uh, I can't remember who it is, but it says uh, talks about our hearts being idol making factories. I don't know why I always have a hard time remembering that person's name. So um, if you remember, drop it in the comments and tell me that would be awesome. So um, our hearts just tend to be idol making factories where we take good things, we make them a God thing in our life, and that's a bad thing. And so I want to make sure that we are keeping things on the proper, proper balance, proper perspective, proper priorities. So <clears throat> that was verse 12. There's a path before each person that seems right, but in the end it looks, it is death. And so the other, the other thing is the enemy of our soul, uh, his native language is lies. And so we need to be careful that the path that he's offering us often looks like life, often looks awesome, but in the end it leads to death because that's how he rolls. He's all about deceiving us. He's all about taking us the wrong direction. So then jumping into verse 30, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body and jealousy is like cancer in the bones. And I don't know about you, but uh, where this one really stuck out to me was just thinking about the dynamics that social media has in our lives, where uh, it's something like 76% of people that spend 45 minutes online on social media uh, end up more dissatisfied with their lives than when they started out. This is a pretty high percentage, and uh, no, I'm not. I'm not quoting an, an exact study because I can't remember. I know that I've read a statistic that was very similar to that, um, so don't take me to the bank on that one. But the principle holds true, and I think this verse um, kind of points it out. Just the impact that that can have on us is if we are not practicing contentment, we are not walking in a heart of gratitude and thankfulness before the Lord, that it puts us in a place of, of jealousy, oftentimes being jealous of what other people have compared to what we have. And uh, Proverbs is trying to tell you, um, that's like a cancer in your bones. 
and you get cancer in your bones, that's a bad, that's a bad situation. Um, again, th that's a path that gener generally leads to death. And so, um, but when you look at Philippians chapter 4, uh, 413, Philippians 413, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, that famous verse that, you know, potentially gets uh, mis, uh, misapplied to our lives frequently. Um, he's talking about contentment uh, in that chapter, whether whether I have a little or whether I have a lot. I have learned, you know, in whatsoever state I am to be content. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can I can live in a little and I can live in a lot by the power of Jesus. And so um, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. And it's really interesting how that's true when you have a life full of peace and content contentment and forgiveness. Let's not forget about that. But it it dramatically affects the physical health of your body and jealousy and anger and bitterness and unforgiveness. Yikes. Uh, tear you up inside. And so we want to be a people um, that learn to get our our hearts to a peaceful place. And I think it's interesting. Psalm chapter 23, he leads us beside still waters. He makes us lie down in green pastures. And so maybe you need to think about, and uh, I'm talking to myself here too, is maybe you need to take a fresh look at rest, rest before the Lord. Um, and that it's not just all do, do, do all the time, because if all you do is do, do, uh, well, anyways, I'll just leave that where it is. Um, and then finally, verse 34, godliness makes a nation great, but sin is a disgrace to any people. And so I just thought, you know what, let's close today's devotion in Proverbs, just praying for our world. We want to pray for Israel and everything that's going on in Israel and Palestine and just that entire area, all the people involved, a lot, a lot, a lot of innocent people having their lives significantly either destroyed or completely derailed uh, because of everything that's going on. And so I want to pray for them, but also want to pray um, as we're coming up to an election uh, here in the United States, we're coming up to an election here pretty quick, that righteous leaders would be uh, put in office, that that we would have righteousness and, and, and not just in our leaders, though obviously election times are important, but in our churches, that we would be people of righteousness, that we would be, uh, because righteousness exalts a nation and uh, wickedness tears it down, destroys it. And so we want to be a people that stand up for righteousness and that we would be a people that would set the tone that the church, rather than maybe trying to, I said this a couple weeks ago in one of my sermons, that we would be a people that are uh, speck removers rather than plank extractors, you know, that we would be more focused on getting the specks out of our own eyes. Um, excuse me, it's the opposite way around that we would take the plank. <laughs> Gosh, I'm, I'm on point today. So, but hey, you know what? Um, nobody's perfect. And I'm just really driving that point home today. So we want to take the plank out of our own eye so that we could see clearly to help remove the speck out of our brother's eye. And so, um, you know, ha have you removed a plank lately? Have you taken a look at that giant thing sticking out of your face? And, and can you, can you take care of that? Can you take it before the Lord and ask him to help you walk in righteousness because righteousness exalts a nation, uh, but wickedness destroys. And so let's be a people that are taking the plank out of our own eyes that are walking faithfully before the Lord that are really pressing towards righteousness because that honors God. And we want to be a people that honor God. It doesn't earn us salvation. No, we are not working for our salvation, but it does honor him and it does bring a reward. And so God bless y'all. Have an amazing day. And thank you so much for continuing to join us in this journey. And I will see you tomorrow.